So just jump straight into the fuel discussion. Why methanol? What is the reason behind it? I know NCL has a similar deal with Yara, but they're going to go on ammonia. So is there an easy answer to the question, why methanol for you guys? The short answer is there's no easy answer. Um, as, as, as always with, with these kind of things, it's decarbonization is a marathon. It's not a sprint and uh, you need to be agnostic. So I think to to be exposed to different solutions is probably the way forward. I think methanol is one of the solutions, uh, certainly in specific trades. And I think we have you know, discussed that with NCL for, for quite some time. And we are happy with having ships that are way more efficient, even if they don't run on methanol. But if they're on methanol, they are, they are basically carbon neutral. So I think it's, it's a leap towards uh, making sure you know, we're on the right track, we're, we're on the right direction of travel, so to say and methanol is one of the options. Uh, I would not rule out other options like ammonia uh, either, but uh, I think it's, it's about taking a leap towards decarbonization. So you're setting up sort of a new route and maybe a good analogy is sort of setting up a, a bus route. You need people on both sides of the equation to travel something to the destination, but also back again. And why are, can you explain how you do fix that equation? I know the long-term contract, the LCAM is a huge thing here, but just to let people know how you actually have to design these trade routes. Yes, I mean, absolutely. It is, it is I would say, a, a key trade route of, um, of NCL already. Um, they have been very eager in their path to decarbonization to also offer green products to their customers. And LCAM being a key customer uh, and basically a key puzzle piece. And I think it's, it will be the first green transportation corridor on, on at least on the seaside in Northern Europe. Uh, and it, it needs more than one party because it's, you know, a lot of uncertainty still prevail, global compliance standards, regulation. So I think it was, it was good to team up with like-minded partners, NCL and Elkham, and form an alliance that actually was able to put the project together. And that includes someone has to order the ship, that's us. Someone has to charter the ship, that's NCL, and a bit of a commitment, and it's actually not just a bit of a commitment, it's a long-term cargo commitment of Elkham. And I think that were the ingredients that was, were the foundation of this uh, project in the first place. And I think that's very important because, as, as we said earlier, there's no silver bullet solution. So you really need to have like-minded partners to move ahead. To make these a more or make this deal more traditional and more well used, do you think like it, it is up to the partners to commit on those long term contracts, or is that also a big ask for Elkem and sorts of to, to actually commit to those years? I mean, it, it is an ask. At the same time, at least on this specific trade route, Elkem knows they have the cargo. Others know they have the cargo. So it's a it's a very I would say special trade uh, to start with. I think it will be more difficult on on the main lane, on the global trades where volumes go up and down, companies might shift production locations, etc. But in this, in this case, I think it's a, it's a good combination of having also certainty about the trade um, and the volumes. And therefore, I think, yes, it is a long-term commitment, but at the same time, I think it's a win-win-win situation.